So this is the first time I've set it up. Uh, oh. and, and on one of their mounts too, actually, which I've never used before. So. But like this whole thing here is the mount. Yeah. And this tube here is the telescope. So the mount is very complex because why? Why is the mount so complicated? Well, when you're going to be doing, say, astro imaging, which like, this mount is designed like for. You're like you're taking an image and expose it for like an hour. Of a very dim, um. deep sky objects like nebula or galaxies or a glob of clusters, uh, you're going to have a long exposure, so you need a mount that's very steady and also that it can track exactly. Because, you know, you want the image recorded, on, you know, you don't want anything moving around. So the way this mount works is that right. this axis here, there's actually a polar scope, which I haven't installed yet. Oh, I see. Uh, I will try to point this at the, the North Star, the polar star, and what will happen then is if this thing is properly aligned to, to the celestial pole, when this thing rotates, um, this is going to track the stars. Track the object exactly. And as it it's goes going to, this, this compensates for rotation of the Earth, so it's going to be locked on steady on the target all the time. So this basically will rotate once a day. Mm -hmm. And this is really hard to align with the North Pole. I remember being a kid, like a teenager, I bought a telescope. Like the first time I ever got a job, I saved my money and bought a telescope, and my dad would help me to try to line it up with the North Star, because if you can't line it up, you can't track. I didn't have a motor or anything fancy. It was just like a wooden mount. And you had these, this little, um, like, what would it be called? A like this flex, metal thing? A flex cable. Yeah, with like a little, with two knobs and it, we would freeze like anything and struggle to get the North Star aligned properly. And so hopefully this is easier to Well, I should show you the... Um... Um, often we'd never get it aligned properly. And then you can't find your way around the sky with your telescope, because on the dials, it helps you figure out where you are. But if it doesn't work, you will find out right now. Right now. The thing is, you can still star hop. We still can look around the sky and move our telescope. I mean, this is the first time you, you set it up. Yeah. Oh, but we've set this, this mount he's used before. before. He's used the, you've used the mount before, yeah. though, right? No, I just set oh. it up and turned it on. Okay. So here, here, have a look through that. What, do you, what is this? That's a polar scope. That should go in the middle of that. It's a polar so have, scope? Yeah. What, what do you mean? But you can well, see, oh it. my gosh, that's so funny. I don't see anything. No, you don't see anything, but you can see there, there's oh, a big dipper. Oh, is this for like, people who there, don't know what it is? Dipper, this is amazing. Some of the so it helps you figure out what's there. Okay, we should show this. Can you here, look through that? That's amazing. It's got the graduations in so it. So you line all the stars up, and then it'll help you find the North Star. So that's then, really great, Charles. I've never seen anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that's your, your polar alignment. Really? Scope. So they don't, you don't just have to find it like on your own? No. Wow, no wonder. There's I other ways they, you can do Do you think they it? had that before, like 30 years ago when I was... No. no? <laughs> Probably not, right? Yeah. So, but amazing. I'm not going to put it in. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, because I don't think we're going to... We don't need that uh, uh, accurate of a polar alignment. To find Jupiter. Yeah, to you know Jupiter. where Jupiter no. is. Yeah, no, it'll, it'll, it'll pop out in a Right, right, right. I see. This is quite sophisticated. That's why the amateurs, I call him the professional amateur. Because everything is so sophisticated. But uh, well, he is. And yeah, I call uh, him the. He's. We call Charles is an amateur astronomer. That means it's his hobby. So he's not trained as a professional. He doesn't do professional research, but it's just a hobby for fun. So actually, but I do have a nickname where I call him the professional amateur because everything he does and knows how to do and all his equipment is so sophisticated. <laughs> so I'd never seen that polar scope before. It's really amazing. We have an easier to use scope that we use more often. It's not here, it's at our cottage. Oh, there it is. There's Jupiter. Oh, wow, so high, Charles. Yeah, Look so how high it is. It's 40 degrees. I think it's a little higher than that. Well, your hand is 25, right? Oh, really, your hand is 25. I don't think my yeah, hand's 25 I degrees. Than, I think I was off. On I that. think your hand is five degrees, so yeah, that's about right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. It's amazing how it just popped right out. But you can see it's not twinkling at all either. Um, yeah, it's amazing. We have an easier to use telescope. It has a mount that's called a Dobsonian mount, but you just move it around with your hands and it'll stay steady, but it doesn't track anything. So if you're looking in the eyepiece, you can see your object drifting out as the Earth is turning. This is more if you want to do imaging or something more complicated. Charles, you know, I bet you could stick a camera on here and measure a planet transit. Um, I don't know if the aperture is right, I think. Uh, yeah, I think you definitely could. Because uh, you have to do 1% photometry. You'd have to have a nice detector though that wasn't too noisy. I'm, I'm sure you could do that. This has like an adapter for a camera, right? Yes. I, I bet you could do it. It's a good project for like even high school. I mean, it's crazy, but it's a good high school student project. Well, one of, uh, a couple members of our club, a couple teenage the girls, girls right. they, yeah, they did it with a 16 inch scope. Mm -hmm. One here though? In, or no, in it's in actually a remote scope in uh, like Sierra, a Sierra Nevada right? mountains. Okay. Right. Yeah, maybe we'd have trouble, I'm not sure. Um, well, I'm gonna actually try I think to turn we might this thing on. And uh, see if I can uh, get the thing tracking. You know, it's so high, I bet we could have even seen it from our, our backyard, huh? Possibly, yeah. 
really going to cheat here on this one. And so, okay. I don't have the proper connector, so I don't know if you want to put this in. <laughs> I can hear something. Yeah, the motor's running. It's so silent. Uh, location one, go to. Did you already plug in the coordinates for Jupiter? Yeah. Really? Yeah, resume from park, I think, three. OK, um, I'm just going to start slewing this thing. Let's make sure that's all locked. What are you doing right now? I'm slewing the scope to, um, I could do it by manually, but I thought I'd just do it. We're yeah. turning it to try to look at Jupiter, which is the first object out tonight. It's Actually, so bright. You can see it. Did you see it right up there? Actually, you know what? I think I went the wrong way. Yeah, I thought you were going to go that way, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm not so. used to equatorial miles. Did you have alt -as? Yeah, I have alt -as. It's really nice. Too bad Saturn is Saturn. Saturn's not out. No. Oh, well, I can I can see the bands very clearly in this. I think you should take a picture of this, Charles, and post it on Facebook and show your friends how great it is. Hopefully, I can. I got a camera. I got right mine, now. but it's not super great. I don't know if I will be able to take a picture to it, but. Okay. Oh, not bad. My parking job's not too bad. Oh, nice. It looks good all set up, Dad. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? How does it look? Does it look better? Yeah, it looks better now. That was more How do you contrast. guys like it? It's this new telescope. OK, so you know what we're seeing? We set something really awesome up for you. I don't think you've ever seen it before in your life, actually. So it's who wants to go Jupiter, first? Actually. And there's something cool about it. So if you want, you can sit down. And there's a focus here, Max. You might have to focus it. There's, a, there's a, the, the brass one, the little one here. See the brass one? That's fine focus, cool, and right? the other one is coarse. So to try the brass one first, the fine focus. Uh, white with a bunch of black dots. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let me see, let me see. Oh, I see it. Uh, okay, do you want to try and get it? It looks completely out of focus, though. I think it's out of focus. What do you see, Alex? Which one's the coarse focus, Charles? Black. Oh, okay. You need to move the black one, not that well, one. Ma this. Maybe, maybe not. Let me try. Let me try. Because it was. No, let me do it. Let me do it. Just stay there. I think you can see it now, but you may have to move this one. Do you, first of all, do you see anything? I see aliens. <laughs> okay. No, what do they look like? Do they look I like a movie? A big planet with four other planets around it. The big planet kind of has faint stripes. Of All right. There you closely. go. Very and you know, good. guess what planet that is, you know? It's Venus. Actually, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I was kidding. It's okay. Jupiter. Jupiter, yeah. Do you, have you ever seen the moons before? I've seen one. Isn't that so cool that there are four moons? But do you know, there's like 60 moons. 60, yeah, but you can't around. see all 60. You can only so see the four. I, Charles, I'm pretty sure you can only see the four biggest ones ever. You can only see the, only see the four biggest ones. Right. See, isn't that so cool? Do you want to focus a little? You can right. use this brass part here. Okay. Put, put I'll put your hand on it right there. Just, just, just no, 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 this one, this brass. One. Just tiny amounts. Which way amounts. is like in you, I don't know, we have to try it. Turn it slowly one way, then the other. Oh, really? Uh, Scorpio, yeah. Scorpio, yeah, Scorpio yeah, actually Scorpio is another constellation. And they're never in the sky at the same time because he runs from Scorpio. Oh, okay. Scorpio cool. kills him. Oh, it's very rough. 
Well, you know, you can't wait to go to the cottage again and see the Milky Way and shooting stars and everything. There's not as much pollution. Yeah, you can't really see too much from the suburbs here. I guess it's probably too late to see Orion. Sometimes we can see it um, right now. How about the tiny dipper? The little dipper? Yeah. Usually it's over there where the North Star is. You can barely see it. Actually, they might be able here. to see it because they have really good eyesight. No, like, little you, dipper. You can see Polaris. The North Star is L the bottom of the little, little dipper. Little dipper will oh, be wow, starting over there, us. right? Because the big dipper, right? You follow this from the big dipper. There's the handle, right? It goes not Arcturus, right? But oh, right. Arcturus is really red. Follow that, and there's the North Star, which is on the handle, the end of the big, the, the little dipper, which you can. Can you see that? I can see a few. Okay. Charles, I can see that in the morning. Charles, show them can how with the Big like Dipper you arc to Arcturus and right. spike to Spica. Right, so there's the Big Dipper. You follow the handle, which arcs. See it? Arcturus. That's Arcturus. And then spike to Spica. I can't. Sure, just look up at Jupiter. Uh, there's animals in under the ice. There's bacteria, I think. Okay. Yeah, but obviously not wondering about this. Oh, right, because they're too dumb. Well, maybe it could be. Right? Maybe, who knows? Maybe I don't they think they a, wonder. Like, do you think maybe there's a complete, wonder? complete, <laughs> complete whole, uh, 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 like, do you uh, think, habitat underneath in the oceans, um, right? Like, do you think ants wonder about us? I mean, I don't think so. No, I don't think they don't. Really? The ants, like, the sky gods are going to kill us. It's rough. Right, they probably don't look up at the stars, though. No. Yeah. 